Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, I have a ton of great emulation news for you. We're talking about Aether SX2, Ryu Jinx, Yabus and Shiro, and MAME. Let's get started. <laughs> Now, some of you may or may not have noticed that I didn't put out a video yesterday. I decided to take the day off to enjoy my last day of camping before heading back to the real world. And now I'm at home and, well, back in the real world. Here's another video. We'll kick things off talking about Ryujinx, the Nintendo Switch emulator on PC, and it just had a massive update. The Vulcan backend is now available in main versions of Ryujinx. I will leave a link to this announcement in the description below, and I highly recommend checking it out because it's massive. Vulcan to Ryujinx is a really huge step forward. In my opinion, if you're using OpenGL, you should definitely check out Vulkan. Fortunately, enabling this is really simple and straightforward. As soon as you update Ryujinx, you should get this pop-up message. It'll ask you to use Vulkan as your default graphics backend. The answer here is yes, I would definitely check this one out. And if for some reason you want to change this later, just go to Options here, go to Settings, and then from here go to Graphics. And you can change the graphics backend from Vulkan to OpenGL. And on a side note here, if you have a GPU with less than 4GB of VRAM, make sure to check off Enable Texture Recompression. That'll help reduce bloat and driver crashing. It might sacrifice the quality of your textures overall, but you'll be glad you checked this one off. Now, something else worth pointing out with this new version of Ryu Jinx version 1.1.200, you might actually notice some performance loss, some stuttering within the games, possibly some choppiness. And this is completely normal. The shader cache files that you have previously built up are no longer good. You have to rebuild them from scratch. Fortunately though, with Vulkan, rebuilding your shader should be pretty quick. It's very efficient. If you want to learn more about those shaders or see a comparison between OpenGL and Vulkan, I will leave an official video from Ryujinx in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. But hopefully by switching over to Vulkan, you see some improved compatibility and improved performance across the board. If you take a look at the chart, here. The red is using Vulkan and the blue is using OpenGL. Vulkan completely blows OpenGL out of the water with an RX 570. For those of you with Intel GPUs, here's OpenGL and here is Vulkan. A massive improvement. Here's Smash using OpenGL and well, here's it using Vulkan. Overall, you can probably agree with me that this is absolutely huge for Ryujinx, so huge shoutouts to the development team for making this possible. And speaking about huge shoutouts to the development team, next up we're talking about PS2 emulation on Android with Aether SX2. And this one is a big shout out to Taurith. There's a brand new feature available on the development build of Aether SX2. At the time of filming, this new feature isn't available on the Google Play Store, but if you want to try your hands on an experimental version where some things may be broken, head to AetherSX2.com, click on download. Uh, once you are here, click on Close Testing Alpha, then click on the top folder, and the APK at the time of filming is 2571. In this version, there's a brand new audio latency option. You can set the target audio buffer size, and you can find that settings in the general app settings and under audio. And also here, there's a brand new save state menu. Things look a heck of a lot prettier. So here's what the beautiful brand new save state menu looks like. And from this menu, even in game, you can delete save states pretty easily. You just have to long press on them and you get this menu here that says save state or delete state. And under the audio settings, here's that new audio latency option. By default, you probably shouldn't have to touch this, but if you wanted to tinker around with it, you absolutely can. And speaking about tinkering around, next up here we're talking about Sega Saturn emulator on PC and Android with Yavis and Shiro. There's a brand new version available. So version 1.9.2 of Yavis and Shiro has just dropped. We've got improved stability of save states and loads and improve the performance when you use the CPU Affinity. Now there is a minor caveat here. If you do have save states by updating, they will be broken. So before updating, just make sure to actually save the game as opposed to saving your state. And if you can't save the game, then maybe play through your save state to a place where you can save the game and not worry about it. And last up here, we're talking about MAME. MAME version 0.246 was just released. And if you use MAME, you might want to update to this version. As per usual, we have a bunch of bug fixes and improvements, including some major audio overhauls, some new working machines, new working clones. And if I scroll down under new working software under Game Boy, there have been a bunch of prototypes that have been added, including Primal Rage and Darkwing Duck. 
And under SNES, we've got Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Z Final Bout. And as per usual, if you're interested in reading more about this, I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Feel free to check it out. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below, whether it was the massive update for Ryu Jinx, Aether SX2 getting some cool new features, uh, Mame or even Yabish and Shiro. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.